Good evening, Tributes. Welcome back once again, and I hope everyone is well. Uh, the video we're doing today is slightly different, obviously, because it is the 74th Games. So, obviously, I did not write this story. It's an alternative fan fiction and based on the works of Suzanne Collins, published by Scholastic Corporation. Um, the version I made this evening is a mixture of the books, films, and also my imagination. But do remember, with my stories, they're always written from the capital perspective. So, as usual, there is a spoiler alert in order. Freya, say spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. She gets it. All right, I'm sure you will as well. Enjoy. Oh. The 74th Games that took place in the year 74. Halfway through the 74th Games, Game Maker Crane made a fatal mistake which allowed for two victors. Many believe that it was this year's Games, along with the subsequent actions of these victors, which caused the Second Rebellion in 76. This year's victors were Peter Malak and Katniss Everdeen, both aged 16, from District 12. Prior to the games, Peter was known around his local area as a quiet, yet reliable young man, who often helped his parents at their bakery. Katniss, on the other hand, was known to be a cynical and antagonistic young lady, who spent most of her time escaping from the district, where she killed wild animals in exchange for illegal contraband within the black markets of District 12. When the female tribute was reaped, it was originally Katniss's younger sister, Primrose, who was chosen for this position. However, as Primrose was being led to the platform, Katniss chose to volunteer in her place. This caused confusion, not just for the population of District 12, but also for the mayor and other officials, seeing as District 12 had never had any volunteers before. When this reaping was shown in Viewing Square, it also garnered a lot of shocked gasps from capital citizens, who were surprised to see a volunteer from such a weak district. Shortly afterwards, Peter was quickly chosen as the male tribute, and he seemed quite despairing when his name was called, but he walked up to the platform without any further commotion. When Katniss and Peter shook hands, it was correctly guessed by Caesar Flickerman and Claudius Templesmith that the pair appeared to recognise each other. When they were held in the town hall, Katniss was visited by her mother, sister, and her friend and fellow convict, Gail, whilst Peter was visited by his parents, before they both said goodbye to their respective visitors. Before the reaping had occurred, the position of mentor for the female tribute of District 12 had been offered to the staff of the training centre, but none of them chose to take this position, and therefore Hamish Abernathy, the only surviving victor from this district, automatically became the mentor for both Peter and Katniss. In a later interview with Peter and Katniss's escort, Effie Trinket, the journey to the capital was a tumultuous affair. Hamish was allegedly intoxicated before the train had even set off that morning, and he did not take kindly to Peter's insistence for advice and Katniss's hostile attitude towards his mentoring style. It was even reported that a fight nearly broke out between Hamish and Peter, when Peter tried to stop Hamish from drinking from his liquor flask. Peter and Katniss's respective stylists were Portia Phipps and Sinner Jasper. Portia was able to boast that she had been the stylist to a previous victor, but Sinner had not yet experienced this honour. When Portia and Sinner were assigned to be stylists to tributes from the district that was considered to be the weakest, whilst one of these tributes was ironically the first from this district to volunteer, they agreed to dress them in something more elaborate than the usual coal mining outfits that were often used for this district. Therefore, Peter and Katniss were dressed in shiny, coal-coloured garments that activated a very realistic-looking trail of fire as their chariot headed down the parade. Halfway through the parade, the pair held their hands up together, which resulted in rapturous applause from the audience, and immediately made them more noticed by many capital citizens. This year was in fact the first time that District 12 received the award for Best Dressed Tributes according to the leading design journal, Anderson Fashion, amongst more praise from many other leading fashion designers in the capital. When the tributes started training, Peter and Katniss initially balanced their time between a variety of different exercises, yet they seemed to be trying to keep a low profile from the career tributes, especially Kato from 2, a muscular warrior who earned the title of Male Tribute for District 2 by eliminating his fellow volunteers in a record amount of time within the desert arena for his district. However, on the second day of training, Peter was noticed by the career tributes when he fell from a climbing net to the floor. He was indeed laughed at by Cato and Marvel from One, who had been expected to volunteer, seeing as he was the second son of Mayor Braun and younger brother of the former victor Augustus Braun. Peter's fall also amused Clove from Two, who was almost disqualified from her volunteer games for continuing to fight with other tributes after she had eliminated them, which even caused her to be electrocuted by a hovercraft at one point towards the end of these games. Yet after Peter fell, 
Katniss encouraged him to get back up and show off his skills to the careers, which he did by throwing a large weight at a set of spears that were near to where the careers were standing. Peter's show of force allegedly worried Cato, who had become rather close to Glimmer from one, when she appeared to be rather captivated by Peter's surprising levels of strength. Glimmer had been a jewellery model from one of the richest families in the district, and she used her looks and natural charm to earn the role of female tribute for District 1. For the rest of the day, the pair tried to ignore the careers. Peter camouflaged himself against a tree, whilst Katniss practiced at the survival station. They noticed Rue from Eleven, a petite young lady who seemed rather intrigued by the skills that Peter and Katniss were showing, but they chose to continue practicing instead of interacting with her. The assessment of training scores occurred the next day, which resulted in Peter earning a respectable score of 8, whilst Katniss managed to score an 11, the highest score this year. Although details of assessments are kept strictly confidential, it is rumoured that Peter threw several heavy weights around the training centre, but it was never revealed what Katniss did in order to achieve such a high training score. After Katniss received this score, several members of staff at the training centre begged to take over her role as mentor, but it was far too late at this point. Furthermore, when Hamish was asked by Atala Jasper, the head of training, if he would like to transfer his mentorship of Katniss, he surprised her by rejecting her offer, and insisting on keeping Katniss as his mentee. According to a spokesperson of Morning Line, the leading betting company during the 70s, Katniss and Peter, but especially Katniss, were some of the hardest tributes to give odds for this year, seeing as they had received high training scores, yet they were also from the most outlying district, which was unlikely to produce a victor. Katniss ultimately achieved victory odds of 15 to 1, whilst those of Peter were 19 to 1. In terms of likeliness to win the games, these odds ultimately placed the pair in the middle of the pack. Other high scorers included Cato and Clove, who each scored a 10, whilst Marvel, Jeremy from 10, and Thresh from 11 each scored a 9. On the other end of the scale, Finch from 5 scored a 5, and Kalia from 3 and Annie from 9 each scored just a 4. However, this year's group of tributes also had the highest average training score in 8 years. At the start of the interviews, each of the careers easily showed an expected level of charisma and confidence to the capital audience. Other tributes who made an impression were Rue, who was the youngest tribute this year, with the audience seeming to find her quite adorable. Finch also made an impression for her intelligent manner and concise strategies, which marked her as a potential dark horse according to several game experts. For their interviews, Katniss was adorned in a flowing red dress, whilst Peter wore a shiny dark suit with a mashing red lapel. During Katniss's interview, she seemed a bit dazed as she entered. When she sat down, she infamously asked, What? to Caesar, when he had simply complimented her on her entrance, which amused the audience. Caesar started the interview by praising Katniss for her parade outfit. She appeared to come out of her shell as the interview went on, and she even offered to show off the flames of her dress, which were activated by her twirling. When she did this, it triggered a wave of applause from the audience. When it was time for Peter's interview, he joked with Caesar about the standard of living in the capital, which somehow resorted in them sniffing each other's armpits, much to the amusement of the audience. However, as the interview went on, it took a more serious tone, and Peter admitted that he was enamoured with his district partner, Katniss. This admission seemed to create a rather awkward atmosphere for the rest of the interviews. According to staff at the interview studios, Katniss was extremely angry by Peter's confession, and a fight broke out backstage. It is unknown what interaction occurred between them before the game started the next day, but some sources state that they slept together that night. Gamemaker Crane was interviewed after the tributes and spoke about how this was an interesting group of tributes, especially with Katniss being a volunteer from the weakest district. Yet he stayed very quiet about the arena, even when Caesar tried to prompt him into revealing more. Former game maker, Elspeth Friend, even caused some controversy later that night, when she let slip that earlier that day, she had betted on Finch from 5 to win this year's games, when current or former game makers are not allowed to bet, let alone reveal who they have betted for. However, Caesar quickly jumped up and pretended to silence her with his hand, which caused the audience to laugh at this faux pas, and the interview continued without any further hitches. Prior to the game's beginning, the tributes were dressed in dark green t-shirts, black jackets and trousers, along with sturdy boots. Sinner saw Katniss into her tube, whilst Hamish saw Peter into his. Peter even managed to correctly guess from his clothing that the games would take place in a forest arena. This year's games took place in a dense forest and river arena.
It featured Tracker Jackers and Mutt Chase and lasted for 13 days. This year's arena was extremely large compared to those of previous years. The cornucopia was in a flat, grassy meadow and was surrounded by a dense forest that gradually sloped downwards as tributes travelled from the centre of the arena. Once the ground levelled out, tributes would encounter a plethora of different trees and plants, with some trees that were in fact so flammable that they could even burn from contact with sunlight. There was also a long river that flowed from one end of the arena to a large lake that lay next to the cornucopia, whilst away from the central area, mountainous forests towered up to the perimeter. When the podiums rose into the arena, Peter and Katniss were two of many tributes who initially seemed to be almost blinded by the light that met them. As their eyes adjusted and the countdown started, Peter appeared to be calmly composing himself and getting ready to run, whilst Katniss was looking over the supplies that lay within the cornucopia clearing. It was noted on a rewatch that she seemed to be eyeing the bow and arrow that lay in her direction just in front of the cornucopia. Just before the gong sounded, Peter shook his head at Katniss, which seemed to dissuade her from aiming for the bow and arrow. When the gong sounded, Peter was one of four tributes who ran straight in the opposite direction of the cornucopia and away through the forest, along with Mackenzie from Eight, Rue and Finch. Meanwhile, Katniss ran off her podium, but then paused and seemed phased. She looked to her right and saw Marina from Four grabbing a backpack. Without any further thought, Katniss ran to the backpack that was the next to the one that Marina had just grabbed. However, just as she approached it, she was hit in the back with a small knife that was thrown by Imanol from Nine, which knocked her to the ground. Just as Imanol was about to stab Katniss with an axe, Clove threw a knife which hit him in the back. As Imanol fell, Clove threw another knife at Katniss, but it hit her backpack instead, which stopped it from hitting her body. Katniss then clambered up to her feet and ran away, as Clove ran after her and the other careers continued to kill as many of the other tributes as they could. As Katniss ran out of the clearing, she ran straight into Finch, and they both fell to the ground, but instead of fighting as expected, they looked straight at each other with expressions of extreme fright, before they both gradually got to their feet and started running away in opposite directions. Katniss and Peter both continued running through the forest, albeit in different directions, and eventually they each set a base where they rested, and after three hours had gone by, twelve cannons sounded. Katniss spent the rest of the day setting traps, drinking water from the river, and cooking any lizards that she could find. As dust set in, she climbed and rested in a nearby tree, where she used a rope from her backpack in order to tie herself to the tree's branch and stop herself from falling. Whilst Katniss rested, Peter also lay in his base and looked out at the approaching dusk. As it was still rather windy at the time, Peter did not hear any of the sounds behind him, and therefore failed to notice that the career pack had been walking towards his direction from behind and had in fact just seen him. Kato quietly whispered to the other Kriyas that they could ally with Peter in order to find Katniss and then kill him once they had found her. The other Kriyas reluctantly appeared to accept this plan, but just as they were whispering, the wind died out and Peter turned around to see the pack just behind him. Peter darted off through the forest as quickly as he could, but each of the career tributes quickly chased after him. Although Peter was able to run fairly quickly, Marvel cut diagonally through the forest and managed to tackle him. As he tried to get himself free, the other careers caught up with him, and to Peter's apparent surprise, Cato stated to him that they did not want to hurt him, but they simply wanted him to help them find Katniss. Peter's initial reaction seemed to be that of uncertainty, but after a few seconds he accepted, and was helped back up by Marvel. Peter probably realised that had he not accepted, the careers would have likely killed him, and therefore he did not have much choice in the matter. The career pack and Peter carried on through the dark forest together, whilst looking out for any other tributes to kill. As they walked, the fallen were shown in the sky, which showed the portraits of Kalia from three, Marina and the boy from four, the boy from five, both from six, both from seven, the boy from eight, and Annie and Imanol from nine. As Katniss slept, the career pack and Peter continued through the forest, looking out for other tributes and pausing occasionally in order to listen carefully to any other suspicious sounds, which they considered could be tributes, but were usually just the sounds of animals in the forest. Yet just as they were walking down a hill and considering setting base for the night, they spotted a fire burning in the distance to their right. Coincidentally, this fire happened to be very close to the tree in which Katniss was resting, and the cracking of this fire started to awaken her, just as the careers were approaching the area. Katniss seemed unimpressed by someone lighting a fire, but Marvel cautioned the rest of the careers that the fire could be a trap. However, as they neared it, they saw Mackenzie trying to warm herself on the fire within the cold night air. They snuck up from behind, 
and she only noticed them when it was too late for her to escape. Clove grabbed onto Mackenzie and pushed her down into the ground, whilst Cato readied his knife to kill her. Glimmer laughed as Mackenzie begged for them not to kill her, but when she screamed out, Cato quickly stabbed the knife through her chest, which made her fall to the floor. The group and Peter carried on and walked just past Katniss's tree, yet they realised that no cannon had sounded yet. They started to argue underneath this tree, as Katniss desperately tried to stay as quiet as possible, in order to not attract their attention, while she appeared completely irate to see that Peter appeared to be hunting for her with the careers. During this argument, it was noted that Viewing Square was completely silent and filled with tension, probably due to what would happen if Katniss was spotted by the career pack. Yet eventually, after some more arguing, Peter took a sword and went back to Mackenzie, who was trying to crawl across the ground. Peter quietly whispered to Mackenzie that he was sorry, before jamming the sword through her neck, which killed her instantly this time, and sounded her cannon. He then headed back to the careers, who had stood under Katniss's tree, and discussing when they should kill Peter. This conversation immediately stopped as Peter returned to the group, and they then carried on through the forest towards the perimeter. For the rest of this day, Peter continued travelling with the career pack, and looking for other tributes, most notably Katniss, who travelled away from this area, and started skirting the perimeter whilst choosing to keep a low profile from other tributes, most notably the career pack. That night, the Fallen was shown in the sky, with only Mackenzie's portrait being featured. When the next day began, Peter and the careers continued along the riverbank, looking for any other tributes and taking occasional breaks before moving on. Meanwhile, Katniss, who had been travelling most of the night, decided to sleep in a tree that was close to the river. Yet just after noon, the temperature within this area of forest raised to such an extent that the flammable trees, which were positioned next to where Katniss was resting, caught fire. Katniss heard the fire quickly spreading towards her and jumped down from the tree. She then proceeded to run through the forest, away from the fire, which was still close behind her, until she eventually stumbled onto a steep hill, which she rolled down until she fell into the river at the bottom of this hill. However, just as she was coming to her senses and about to get out of the river, the career pack and Peter turned around a nearby corner of the river bank towards Katniss. They shouted with joy when they realised that they had finally found her. Katniss got out of the river as quickly as she could, before running through the adjacent forest, away from the career pack who were closing in on her. In a panic, she hastily looked around one of the forest's clearings for a high enough tree to climb, and when she saw one that she deemed suitable, she climbed it in just a few seconds as the careers approached this tree. They surrounded the bottom of the tree as Katniss climbed up further and Kato proceeded to climb this tree in an effort to catch her. However, due to Kato's more muscular build, he was unable to make it up the tree without breaking branches and falling back down. Glimmer then unsuccessfully shot an arrow at Katniss, followed by Kato, who also failed to hit her. Just as the careers were trying to think of how they could catch Katniss, she looked down and sarcastically suggested that they throw the sword at her, which caused rapturous cheering and laughter from her fans in Viewing Square, whilst those who supported the careers jeered at her and laughed as she winced in pain at injuries that she had sustained in the forest fire. Later that day, some fights even broke out in the square between these opposing supporters. When it appeared obvious that they were unable to climb the tree to reach Katniss, Peter suggested that they set a base and wait for her to come down, which she would eventually have to. Reluctantly, the careers agreed to this, and they spent the rest of the day sat around their fire, eating, drinking, and keeping watch. Yet it was noted by many viewers that Peter appeared worried for Katniss, with some viewers even stating that he could be seen trying to make eye contact with her throughout the evening before the dust settled. To the surviving tribute's surprise, there were no fallen tributes shown that evening. The Greers and Peter then decided to sleep and Peter asked to take the last watch that night, which would occur as the sun was rising the next morning. As he took over from Clove, who had the penultimate shift, he waited until he was confident that she had fallen asleep before he quietly took a small bag of fruit and crept away from the pack where they were now unknowingly sleeping without anyone looking out for them. Peter proceeded to hide behind a tree that was close enough to give him a view of the career's camp and Katniss's tree. Yet Katniss woke up shortly after Peter had repositioned himself, and just as she was looking around to see if the careers were still lying beneath her, she was distracted by a figure in another nearby tree. As Katniss looked over, she saw that it was Rue, who was trying to signal to her that there was a nest full of tracker-jackers in Katniss's tree, and it was positioned directly above where the career pack was sleeping. Katniss realised that she could use her knife in order to chop through the branch and hence drop the nest onto these careers. She carefully climbed up the tree, and despite receiving a few small stings from wayward tracker jackers, 
she managed to cut off the branch that caused the tracker jacker nest to fall to the ground. The careers suddenly woke up in a panic and quickly ran from the swarm. However, Glimmer failed to escape in time and was stung all over her body by a myriad of tracker jackers. She collapsed to the ground, screaming out in complete anguish. As the tracker jackers flew off, Katniss made her way down from the tree as quickly as she could, before falling to the ground next to where Glimmer had just died. Although Katniss did not seem to have been overly affected by the tracker jackers' stings that she had received, she did appear to be hallucinating as she stumbled towards the body of Glimmer, before dislocating Glimmer's rigid fingers in order to retrieve the bow and arrows. Meanwhile, Peter had run out from his viewing point and shouted at Katniss to run away before the careers could return. Peter appeared to be wanting to take Katniss with him, but when he thought he heard someone running back towards him, he quickly ran away in the opposite direction, until he reached the riverbank. Katniss continued stumbling aimlessly for a bit longer, before collapsing unconsciously to the floor. Shortly after Katniss collapsed, Rue made her way down from her tree and checked to see that she was still alive. Rue was the shortest and youngest of this year's lineup, but remarkably, she managed to drag Katniss's unconscious body across the ground into another nearby clearing. Once Rue had managed to drag Katniss's body into an alcove that had been created by a fallen tree, she placed leaves on the areas where Katniss had been stung in order to extract the venom. As Rue rested in exhaustion and Katniss continued to rest, Peter carried on running alongside the riverbank, hoping to put as much distance as he could between himself and the remaining careers, who he knew would now want to kill him. That night, only the portrait of Glimmer was shown as one of the fallen. Over the next day, Katniss remained in an unconscious slumber. Occasionally, she could be heard mumbling about her sister, Primrose, and her father, who had died in a coal mine explosion a few years prior to these games. Peter, on the other hand, continued travelling alongside the riverbank, but just as dusk was starting to set, he turned a corner and was met by Jeremy from Ten, who in an apparent panic was running straight towards Peter. Just as Peter was about to run back the way he had come, and hence away from Jeremy, he saw Marvel, Clove and Cato running up behind Jeremy. Peter turned just as Clove threw a knife at Jeremy's back, which caused him to fall to the ground. As he shouted out, Cato sprinted and caught up with Peter, who was now unarmed. Marvel thrust a sword through Jeremy's heart, whilst Cato slashed Peter's knee with his sword but Peter managed to punch Cato with such force that it knocked him to the ground. As Clove then ran after Peter, he dove into the river and was quickly swept away by the current. Cato regained consciousness and pointed out to Clove and Marvel that he had stabbed Peter in the knee, which had injured him and therefore made him less of a threat. The careers walked away to look for other tributes whilst Peter continued to flow through the water. He was not a strong swimmer, and so he was pulled under the water on several occasions by the strong current. When he collided with some shallow rocks by one of the banks, this aggravated his leg wound further, but he was able to climb out onto the river bank, where he lay in exhaustion before covering himself with some foliage and mud over his face, which he used to camouflage himself against the ground. That night, only the portrait of Jeremy was shown in the sky. The next day, Peter remained where he was and tried to tend his wound, although when he examined it, he was worried to see that it had become worse during the night. Meanwhile, on the other side of the arena, Katniss woke up and was surprised to see that someone had cared for her while she was unconscious. She spotted Rue's hair from behind a tree and beckoned her out by promising that she would not hurt her. The girls ate whilst Rue informed Katniss of what had been happening during her slumber. Rue also mentioned that the career pack were now by the cornucopia and that Ian, from three, was with them and that he had extracted all the podium mines, which he had placed around the remaining supplies in the cornucopia in order to stop any other tributes from accessing these supplies. Katniss and Rue subsequently made their way towards the cornucopia, but rested once the darkness fell, and they were close enough to the cornucopia. Peter also rested in the same position that he had been in on the river bank. At one point, Thresh, from Eleven, walked along this bank, and even trod on Peter's hand, which caused an extremely tense silence when it was shown in the viewer square. However, despite the pain, Peter managed to stay quiet, and Thresh continued on to a wheat field in the north of the arena. The next day, Peter remained in this location, where he slept for most of the day in this camouflage position. Meanwhile, Katniss and Rue hatched a plan to destroy the career supplies by exploding the mines whilst they were distracted. Katniss headed to the cornucopia, where she watched Marvel, Cato, Clove, and Ian guarding the supplies. As Rue set two fires on the other side of the clearing, Katniss witnessed the careers noticing these fires. They quickly decided to head after them, whilst Kato told Ian to stay where he was. Katniss did appear somewhat confused by where the mines were placed, 
that just as she was about to act, she saw someone run out through the clearing towards the supplies. This person was Finch, who appeared to have figured out how the mines were planted. She jumped between the safe spots before grabbing a bag of food and running away past Ian. He finally spotted Finch just as she was about to make her way back out of the clearing, and so he decided to chase after her. This allowed Katniss to step into the clearing and get a better aim with her bow and arrows. Whilst Ian was still trying to work out where Finch had gone, Katniss shot two arrows at a bag of apples, which caused the apples to tumble down the pile and onto the mines below, which subsequently exploded, destroying the vast majority of the supplies in the process. The explosion occurred just as Ian was turning back towards the pile of supplies, and it sent both him and Katniss flying back into the surrounding forest. Kato, Clove and Marvel returned shortly after hearing this explosion, and whilst Ian tried to explain what had happened, Kato angrily snapped his neck, which killed him immediately and sounded his cannon. Katniss, on the other hand, ran back through the forest, but was unable to find Rue where she had left her. Viewers had seen that as Rue was escaping, she was caught in a trap that was set by the career pack. Rue shouted for Katniss, who managed to find her, but just as she was cutting Rue free from the trap, Marvel appeared behind Katniss and threw a spear at Rue. The spear was too quick for Rue to even attempt to dodge, and it hit her in the stomach. Almost instantly, Katniss fired an arrow back at Marvel, which hit him in the chest and killed him. As his cannon sounded, Katniss grabbed Rue as she collapsed to the ground. Within the hour, Rue had also died, and these three tributes portraits were shown that night in the sky as fallen tributes. This now left just six tributes alive, and many game experts stating that this was the closest top six that they had seen in quite a while. Even Morning Lion admitted to having trouble setting the victory odds for these tributes, due to their vastly different skill sets and strategies. The next day, whilst Peter continued to rest by the riverbank, Katniss appeared to be upset, probably due to Rue's death the day before. However, just as she was resting in a clearing, a very important announcement was made regarding the games. Game Maker Crane stated that two victors could now win these games together if they originated from the same district. This idea had been suggested during the 42nd games and had occasionally been proposed during various games since then, but was never used until now. Cato and Clove, who were resting near the cornucopia, appeared happy to hear this announcement, but it was noted that when Cato went to relieve himself shortly afterwards, both of their expressions appeared to switch to concern and suspicion, which many experts suspected was because this pair realised that there would not in fact be two winners. Meanwhile, Finch appeared annoyed by this rule change, but Thresh was somewhat indifferent. Being from an outlying district, Peter and Katniss were not as experienced with the game maker strategies, and Katniss immediately went looking for Peter, who had remained where he was by the riverbank. Peter later revealed that he was hardly able to move by this point due to his wound, and so he hoped that Katniss would be able to find and help him. Indeed, Katniss wandered through the forest and alongside the river until she eventually found Peter in the late afternoon. Katniss proceeded to help Peter to his feet, and the pair wandered towards the mountains by the perimeter, until they encountered a cave, in which they proceeded to shelter. Katniss tried to tend to Peter's wound, but although she maintained a positive demeanour, she seemed to believe that this wound could be fatal. As dust set in, Katniss and Peter were gifted with some soup by sponsors, which Katniss fed to Peter and then herself. Just after they had finished this soup, it was announced that the feast would occur within the cornucopia at dawn the next day. Katniss immediately told Peter that she wanted to go, correctly guessing that there would be medication in their feast bag for Peter's leg. However, Peter insisted that Katniss did not take this risk. She agreed to stay, but even unexperienced viewers realised that she was likely to go against what she had just said. As the sun rose the next day, Katniss quietly left the cave, whilst Peter carried on sleeping. She snuck through the forest towards the cornucopia, and then waited in the forest just outside the clearing, where she had a direct view of the four feast bags. However, just as she was about to run through the clearing, she saw Finch run out from within the cornucopia itself, before grabbing her feast bag and running off to Katniss's right. Katniss saw no movement from around the cornucopia clearing, and so she thought that it was now safe for her to approach her feast bag. She sprinted through the clearing and grabbed her bag, then ran around the cornucopia to her left, just as Clove appeared to Katniss's right, with a knife at the ready. Before Katniss could even react, Clove threw this knife at her, which hit her in the shoulder and knocked her to the ground. Katniss tried to get up and fire arrows, but Clove dodged them, before tackling Katniss to the ground. The pair grappled with each other for a few minutes, and continually tried to get the upper hand from each other. Clove very nearly managed to stab Katniss several times through the head, but she eventually managed to pin Katniss down to the ground with her knife across her throat. 
Clove taunted Katniss about the fact that the careers had killed Rue, which clearly angered Katniss. However, just as Clove was about to stab Katniss, her arm was yanked backwards. Neither Clove nor Katniss noticed that Thresh had been watching this altercation, and when he heard Clove claiming responsibility for the death of his district partner, Rue, he marched straight up to her. After grabbing Clove's arm, he grabbed her by the neck and pinned her against the side of the cornucopia, before demanding to know if it was indeed her who had killed Rue, which made her scream out for Kato. As soon as Clove started screaming, Thresh bashed her head against the side of the cornucopia, and within seconds she was dead. It was shown to viewers that Kato had been watching this episode from the nearby forest, but he seemed to decide that attacking Thresh was not worth the risk. It is also suspected by several experts that Kato had secretly worked out that he would not be allowed to win together with Clove, and so he decided to let her die then instead of having to kill her later himself. Thresh then approached Katniss, who later confessed that she believed that he was going to kill her at this moment, but he said that as Katniss had helped Rue, he would leave her alone just this once. As he ran off with his feast bag, Katniss looked on in shock, then quickly came to her senses and grabbed her feast bag as well, which contained healing ointment, before running away in the opposite direction. As Kato watched Katniss run away, it appeared that he was thinking about attacking her, but he also seemed to realise that she would be able to kill him with her bow and arrow from a distance, and therefore he stayed where he was and did not attack. Katniss ran back to the cave in which she and Peter had spent that night, where the latter was still asleep. He woke up and was initially annoyed that Katniss had gone to the feast, but they applied the ointment to each other's wounds and were amazed by how well their wounds healed. They then spent the rest of the day sleeping in the cave and keeping watch, in order to let their wounds heal in peace. That night, Clove's portrait was shown in the sky, which left just five tributes now remaining. The next day, Katniss and Peter continued to rest in the cave, in order to let their wounds heal. Katniss headed out of the cave and hunted some game for them to eat, but towards the end of the day, a heavy thunderstorm set in, which practically forced her back inside the cave for shelter. That night, it was revealed that no more tributes had died. When Peter and Katniss awoke the next morning, the storm was still raging, and so they remained in the cave. The pair continued talking to each other, and even though they had been close beforehand, this time alone in the intimate setting of the cave appeared to bring them even closer together, and throughout the afternoon and early evening, they were lightly intimate together in this cave. That evening, they were pleased to be sent a large feast by sponsors, and that night as they ate, the storm gradually came to an end. When the fallen were shown that evening, both Katniss and Peter were surprised to see that Thresh had died that day. It was shown to viewers that during the storm that morning, when Thresh had been looking for shelter, he encountered Kato. Despite putting up a strong fight and almost gaining the upper hand against Kato, Thresh was eventually stabbed through the chest and killed. Once the decent weather had resumed the next morning, Peter and Katniss decided to hunt for some food near the cave. As Katniss set off in one direction, she did not see that Peter had taken some nightlock berries from his pocket, so that he could have something to eat as he hunted. Just after Peter walked away from his jacket, which he left on the floor, Finch, who had been spying on the pair since she heard them talking in the cave the day before, grabbed some of the nightlock berries from Peter's jacket. Finch proceeded to follow Peter further through the forest before sitting behind a nearby tree, and looking pensively at the berries. She closed her eyes that had now teared up, then muttered something inaudible to herself before eating these berries. It is heavily debated as to whether Finch intentionally killed herself by eating these berries, but most experts tend to agree that she did, as she apparently had a very broad knowledge of herbal toxicology, and hence she would have most likely recognised the nightlock berries as being poisonous. Furthermore, during her post-mortem, it emerged that she had entered the early stages of starvation, and so it is most likely that she would not have wanted a painful and prolonged death. Katniss, who was not too far away, was aiming to shoot an owl, but shortly after Finch died, she heard a cannon sound. At first she thought this cannon was that of Peter, and she ran towards him in order to check that he was safe. She was shocked and angry to see that he was holding nightlock berries, which she immediately scolded him for, due to their toxic effects. Shortly after finding Peter, they came across Finch's body, and they decided to take the berries away from her, in case they could use them to kill Kato, who was now their last remaining opponent. They then rested in the cave for the rest of the evening, and saw Finch's portrait shown in the sky that night. The next day, Peter and Katniss awoke early in order to hunt for Kato, and they headed towards the cornucopia, where they thought that he would be. Yet as they neared the centre of the arena, darkness fell. They realised that the end of the games were now approaching, and so they very carefully continued through the woods to the cornucopia, seemingly unaware that a pack of mutts was quietly closing in on them. 
Peter thought he heard a sound coming from behind them, and just as he turned around, a mutt jumped straight at him. Katniss immediately shot and killed the mutt with her arrow, and the pair sprinted back to the cornucopia, so that they could climb up and escape the mutts. Although these mutts were closely chasing them, they both made it back and managed to climb on top of the cornucopia with just seconds to spare. However, once they made it to the roof, Katniss was knocked down by Kato. Peter immediately tried to tackle Kato, but Kato easily knocked him back down to the ground. Kato then got on top of Katniss's body and tried to push her head over the side of the cornucopia towards the baying mutts. But Peter managed to knock Kato away from Katniss. The boys subsequently wrestled each other, but this soon resulted in Kato managing to grab Peter in a chokehold, and Katniss gaining back control of her bow and arrow, which she proceeded to point at Kato. After a tense standoff, in which Kato appeared to have a psychological breakdown, Katniss shot her arrow at his hand, which made him cry out in pain, and also allowed Peter to knock him back off the roof of the cornucopia to the ground, where the mutts proceeded to attack him. Whilst they were savaging Kato, he pleaded with Katniss to kill him, which he did by shooting her arrow at his head. Shortly after this shot, Kato's cannon sounded, and the mutts wandered away from the cornucopia clearing. As Katniss and Peter descended from the cornucopia, the sunlight returned to the arena, yet just when they were about to celebrate, Game Maker Crane announced that the previous rule change, allowing for two victors from the same district, had been revoked. This of course meant that only one of the pair could win. In Viewing Square, a huge gasp was heard from the audience, with many expecting a sudden fight to take place. Surprisingly, the duo did not fight, but instead had a relatively calm conversation. Peter at first said to Katniss, who he was now completely enamoured with, that she should kill him. But Katniss, who had now become completely unstable at the thought of losing Peter, decided that if she could not live without him, then she did not want to live at all. She therefore said that they should eat the nightlock berries, because if they could not live together, then they would die together. However, due to his merciful nature, Game Maker Crane considered it better for both Peter and Katniss to survive, instead of them both dying, and he therefore stopped them from eating these berries with just seconds to spare, and they were both announced to be the joint winners of the 74th Hunger Games. This decision proved to be extremely popular amongst both capital and district citizens. Seneca Crane chose to retire from the position of head game maker and moved to the European land shortly after the games concluded. Despite Peter having to have a prosthetic leg fitted due to his injury within the arena, he and Katniss continued to love each other and live happily together. Nevertheless, once the games ended, many district citizens started to misinterpret Katniss's act of love as an act of rebellion against the capital, and over the next year, a number of radicals in various districts revolted against the capital. Peter and Katniss also took part in the 75th Hunger Games the next year, from which they were kidnapped when a group of these radicals and traitors from the now defunct District 13 destroyed the arena, and hence ended these games. It is generally considered by historians that this third quarter quell triggered the Second Rebellion of 76. The enemy forces seized control of Panem in 76, and Katniss and Peter returned to District 12 later that year. During the unofficial capital games of 78, Katniss was apparently offered to appear as a secret assassin, but ultimately turned down this offer. She and Peter got married in 82, before having a son, Crimson, in 83, and a daughter, Rue, in 86. During the early months of 88, District 12 experienced a devastating measles outbreak, which led them to be the first district to fall on the capital's mercy and apply for aid. However, a group of radicals were arrested within the district for defiance against the capital's peacekeepers, including Peter and Katniss Malark, despite the fact that these forces were generously offering aid to the district. When Peter and Katniss were offered the victor's choice, they both chose to fight in the 76th Hunger Games, more commonly known as the Reclamation Games. Thank you once again for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Just a reminder that next Monday we have the 75th Games, also known as the Third Quarter Quell, and the week after that, I am taking a break due to various commitments I have, including birthday celebrations. But the next games will be ready the Monday after that, so on the 21st of September. Have a nice week, and see you next Monday.